Hey, everybody, welcome to the Profit Tool Belt podcast. Today, we're starting off 2023 with a bang, big bang. What we're going to do is figure out how to make 2023 your best year ever. And I've got a free workbook for you so that you can walk your way piece by piece through it and create a plan that makes sense to you at the pace you want to follow. Let's get to the episode. Hey, everybody, welcome to the podcast and welcome to 2023. As you're listening to this right now, this is probably the first episode from us that you've heard in 2023. So welcome to the new year. Now, unless you listen to a bunch of episodes there on New Year's Eve, um, this is one of the first ones out. Listen, we want to talk about how to make 2023 your best year ever. And you're already on the right foot just by choosing to listen to this episode because the whole shoot and match, everything is about being intentional. If you're intentional going into 2023, if you want 2023 to be your best year ever, guess what's going to happen? It's going to be your best year ever. Now, as you know, what gets measured can improve. What we measure, we can manage. And it's the very same for ourselves. You know, you've chosen to be a business leader, to be a business owner. And that puts you in a pretty special and, and weird place because being a business owner is hard. Uh, I'll be the first one to admit it. And I've been a business owner for a long time. Life was easier when I worked at another company. I remember there were days I was done my job by 1030 when I was trying to bug some of my buddies at work. Hey, do you want to take an early lunch? And, you know, trying to make excuses for going for another coffee. Well, that all went out the door when I decided that I wanted to be a business owner, an entrepreneur, somebody that made something out of my, my business and created something out of nothing. And now I'll get to work, and uh, you know, by the in the morning. Let's say well, I like to get to the gym in the morning. I know a lot of you like to do that as well. So I'm up by five to do that. At the gym by six. In the office by just before eight, and then I work straight through till five or six at night. And I don't really. I mean, I take breaks, but we call those breaks fluid rebalancing. They're under three minutes. Leave that to your imagination. It's a family show. So I don't really take breaks, and it's probably the very same for you but I love what I do and I'm sure you do too. So let's get focused on making this year the best year ever because being at work all day is not what this thing's about, right? Think about your tombstone for a moment. Yeah, think about your headstone or your plaque. What's it gonna say? What a great guy. He worked late. That's not what I want mine to say. I want mine to really be a meaningful tombstone. I wanna earn the pain that people feel when I leave this world. And I, you guys have heard me say this before. My big goal, the reason I'm doing all of this is so that the church is packed at my funeral. That's That would make me the happiest guy in the world. I want to leave a positive impact on the whole world. And I want to have left enough impact that people say, he was a good guy. I'm glad he was here. Maybe you're the same and maybe you're not. But whatever level of being in there that you are, if you want to make 2023 your best year ever, I have a system for you. I have a process. I went and I made something for you. It's a download. It's a, uh, a workbook. It's a pretty simple workbook, but it's just somewhere you can take notes. So you don't have to do it from scratch, right? So at least you've got some, some starting points, some easy visuals. Um, and my goal in doing this is so that you have something to work from when you go to the coffee shop. You put the headphones in, you face the wall, uh, and you just get to work. And that's what this is all about, getting to work and, and doing the smart work, working from the neck up as every business owner should. And that's where I want you to be to get this 2023 year off to the right, uh, on the right foot for you. So let me tell you what we're going to do. As I said, we've got a workbook. You'll be able to download that workbook at, at any point during this episode. All you have to do is um, shoot me a text message. I'll tell you now, go to 604-837-8361. Just leave me a text message. Just say, um, best year ever. And then I'll know to send this off to you. Best year ever. Just shoot me a text message there, okay? And I'll send this off to you right away. But let's talk about breaking this into categories. Because this is what I want you to do. Now, whether you wait for the download or not, these are the categories I want you to think about as you think about making this the best year ever. So think about these on a piece of paper. And think about these with a couple of questions around them that make it easy for you to answer and walk through the process to come up with your own answer in your own way. Now, you might think you're the only one with the problem that, you, that you're currently facing in your business. You might say, I need more sales. Uh, you might be saying, we need bigger sales. You might be saying, I've got a profitability problem. 
You might be saying we've got a people problem. You might be saying you've got a mindset problem. You know, just a, a earlier today, I was on the phone, a Zoom call, I guess you would say, with a couple of clients, very strong family business, wonderful people, really nice, nice people, very honest, very open hearted people. And, and, and I think both of them were, were saying to me in their own way, like they were being very specific, but they both said it different ways that they understood who their perfect client was, but they didn't feel that they could talk to those people to that high end client who was willing to pay premium rates for premium work because they didn't see themselves on the same level playing field as, as that kind of person. Maybe that's what you're working on. Maybe that's what you need to do in 2023. If that's the case, I think you're going to like some of these headings because I'm going to challenge you to, to look through a pane of glass, you know, an old fashioned window. Let's say it's broken into, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, there's six panes of glass. Six panes of glass. You're going to look through that window and those six panes of glass. And here's what each pane of glass is named. The first pane that I want you to look at, the first pane of glass, not pain like physical pain. The first pane of glass is faith, whatever your faith might be. The next one is family. The next pane of glass is fitness, health. The next is business success. The next after that is financial success. Those are the panes of glass I want you to look through. Now I realize that's one, two, three, four, five. That's only five panes of glass. So think of a five pane window. But it, isn't it interesting that the first three items I talked about had nothing to do with what you think I do. You think, well, Dom's a business coach. He shows people how to make more money. He shows them how to find their hidden profit leaks. He shows them how to be more profitable, how to put simple systems in place, blah, 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 right? And yet here I am starting 2023 on your behalf saying, first of all, let's ground ourselves in what's really important. Let's ground ourselves in three things that we have to remember when we measure ourselves against a successful year or a successful life. How am I in the categories of faith, family, and fitness? And then I say business success and financial success. And you are free to add other headings here yourself. You might say personal improvement. You might say education. Maybe family isn't a big enough category for you because you need to break that out into you've decided to coach your kids ball team this year. All right. Or you're going to be a mentor to somebody else. Or you're taking a leadership position in an industry association that might go under business success where you've got a second heading. Whatever that is, you've got room to do this. And you'll see in the workbook, there's room for you to take this model and make it your own. This is not a cookie cutter approach, but there's still enough structure there that you know where to go. We can start with faith, family, fitness. We can move on to business success and financial success. For those of you who've just tuned into this podcast and have never heard my show before, thank you and welcome. But it's not always just about the money. People think it's about the money. People think you hire a business coach because you want more money. Some people think you only get a business coach when you're in trouble. Completely the opposite. You get a business coach when you're doing well and you want to do better. It's really too late to call me when you're already in trouble. You got to call me when you're doing well and you're like, how can I do better? We're doing well, but we're stuck. We're doing well, but we're not doing as well as I wanted. We just made $10,000 on that last job. The job was beautiful and perfect but we should have made $22,000 on that job. We left 12 grand on the table. Dom, show us how to go get that back. That's why you call me. That's money, but it's also systems. It's confidence. It's mindset. It's new processes, new ways of looking at old problems, right? But people think that money is the only thing that you talk to me about or the only thing that business planning is about. And it's not. It is not. And I want you to think about this story Really, it's a situation that I had with a gentleman a long time ago where we sat down to have our initial meeting and he said, yeah, Dom, I want to make more money in this business. So, okay, great. I'm taking my notes. Uh, tell me why you want to make more money. Well, be more profitable. Okay, that's a good answer. Be more profitable. Tell me why you want to be more profitable. And so I won't keep going through the whole thing, but after some digging, I found out that he needed more money for a very important reason. His mom was already in an old age home. 
She was in a care facility, an extended care facility. But because of the financial situation, and he was the only sibling, the only of the brothers and sisters that could contribute to taking care of mom, she was in a shared room. So it's called a quad. There's four people in the room, four ladies in the room. And one of the ladies in the room had, I'm not, I'm sorry, I can't remember if it's Alzheimer's or dementia, but she would stay up all night yelling and walking around the room and screaming. And that meant his mom couldn't sleep. And all he wanted to do was make enough money out of his contracting business so he could afford to put her in a private suite. So yeah, he wanted to make more money. Sounds like every other cookie cutter answer out there. But why did he want to make more money? Right? Why? Maybe you've got a child that's extremely gifted in music or sports or something like that. And and they've got an opportunity to go to a great college and you have the opportunity to pay for it. <laughs> the bank of mom and dad. That's your why. Taking care of your parents is your why. Taking care of your family is your why. Mission work, something you truly want to do for your community or your extended community. I don't know what your why is, but you're going to figure it out when you do this exercise. That's why this exercise is put together. Overall, this exercise is called diamond mapping diamond mapping and that'll be explained further when you take the exercise again if you want it if you've heard enough and you want to take this thing just send me a text and just say business plan let me write that down as a keyword for myself business plan no sorry best year ever dominic best year i went off my own system guys my own system says enter keyword here i did not do that best year ever I want you to text me that 604-837-8361. Just say best year ever and we'll shoot that off to you. So the categories are faith, family, fitness, business success, financial success. But more than that, more than that, I want you to understand that what this is, is a proven coaching model and it's based on self-reflection. It's not me. It's not Dom. I, I don't have all the answers. Please, I know sometimes when I listen to my own episodes, it sounds like I have an answer for everything. I don't. I really don't. What I what I really work hard at is having good questions and listening. Now, there are situations I've encountered time and time and time again. And so I'm happy to jump in for that. But I do my best work, my most intelligent work, when I'm listening very carefully and asking the right questions for you to have the answer. Because your answer is what's most important. Your answer is what is most important. And that's why this exercise is based on self-reflection. What I want for your business is, I mean, it's just irrelevant. I'm irrelevant. I'm just here to ask you questions. What's most relevant is you, is your why. Why do you want 2023 to be your best year ever? What happened in 2022 that made you feel like it wasn't already your best year ever? And of course, let me add, if it was your best year ever, let's keep that momentum going. If it wasn't, let's change the trajectory. Let's change the path you're on, right? I want you to be aware. I want you to be the kind of business owner who takes an approach called think, plan, do. Think, plan, do. And think, plan, do comes back to something you've heard me say this on the show before. Again, for those of you who've just joined us in listening to the podcast, I appreciate you joining us, but you haven't heard me say this before. But as a business owner, I get paid from the neck up. I get paid to think, I get paid to plan, and then I get paid to do, right? As one of my clients said to me, this guy happens to be um, a contractor in the um, architectural millwork space, so very high-end finished woodwork. He goes, Dom, I finally realized my people are my tools. He started on the tools. He started as a guy who did not finish high school, and now he runs a multi-million dollar architectural millwork firm. As a matter of fact, he and his partner have just finished their, I'm going to say second purchase of another company. They're forming quite a little organization there and I'm having fun watching it happen. A lot of fun. Guy didn't finish high school and it doesn't matter. Nothing's going to stop him and his partner. Smart, wise, nice guys. Right? My people are my tools. That's a change in mindset. It's a change in how you 
wake up in the morning. You see, you and I think differently. As a business owner, you think differently. And let me prove to you how I know you think differently because I am going to relate to you something you are hoping I don't actually know. It's the moment you get up out of bed. All right. No, I don't actually have a camera posted anywhere, but I know what happens that's different between you and different between somebody who works for you. This is the difference. Your alarm goes off and you get out of bed in the morning, right? You throw off the sheets, you swing your feet over the side of the bed. And as your feet touch the ground, you're already thinking about the business. You're already asking yourself the kind of questions that an owner asks. And those questions, although I don't know the exact question, I know it starts with this. Hmm. How can I do this different? How can I do this better? How can we get this done? You also ask questions that start with what if. What if we did this? What if I moved this and moved that and made this happen? Before your feet touch the cold floor, you're already in think mode. You're already there. Now, now let's look forward to or look over at our neighbor's house. Our neighbor happens to be an employee. What do they think as they swing their feet out of the bed and the alarm goes off? Oh, I got to get a coffee. What time is it? What day is it? Uh, what are we working on today? All right, I'll just try to make it to work on time. It's a totally different headspace. It's a completely different headspace because the business owner, and I'm going to use a big word here, folks, the entrepreneur is a future-focused person, a future-focused person. If you're listening to this show, you're already somewhere on the scale of future-focused. If being future focused was the color green, you're either very light green or very, very dark green. Does that make sense? Like there's this big scale, very, very light green in color or very dark green in color. There's a scale, but somewhere, somewhere in that peacock fan of color is where you lie as an entrepreneur. That's where you stand as an entrepreneur. That's what these exercises are meant to do is they're meant to change your mindset because this business exists because you decided it was going to exist. Changing this year, 2023, to be your best year ever will happen because you've decided to make it happen. And so this workbook is here to make you do that. So again, it's a proven coaching model. We're not inventing the wheel on your back. Um, there's self-reflection built in throughout this. You can do it yourself. You don't need me standing beside you. I'm happy to uh, jump in and help wherever you need to, of course. Um, it's built on awareness and it has a future focus. It is a future focus. For those of you who are looking for an interesting book, to read this year, if you like reading books or listening, uh, there's two book suggestions I have for you. One of them is called Traction, and that's written by Gino Wickman. Gino Wickman. Traction is the business coaching and strategic planning model that I use when I work with clients like yourself. It's the business model I use when I'm working on my own companies. And you guys know I've now built and sold two rather large companies. And I've used that model to build both of those. There's another book that you can read. And it's an old one. You may have already read it. It's called The E-Myth Revisited. And that one's written by Michael Gerber. Gerber like the baby food. The E-Myth Revisited. Now, it's not about e-commerce. E, in this case, stands for entrepreneurial. So the full title would be The Entrepreneurial Myth Revisited. But if you go look at it online, it's called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. The subtitle to that book is Why Most Small Businesses Fail and What to Do About It. And what Gerber talks about in that book is the tensions in your mind. When Remember I talked about self-reflection and awareness? That awareness, that self-reflection is what allowed my architectural millwork client to say to me, hey, my people are my tools. And he went through that shift and change and took him from, you know, just over a million to multiples of millions now a year in sales. And having bought two or three other companies in his space, in his city. Same guy who didn't finish high school. And he wears that like a badge of honor. Makes more money than most lawyers, he and his partner. And that was a great life. Great life. Great attitude, right? understanding that mindset drives everything. It drives it all. And it comes down to, if you decide to make 2023 your best year ever, well, then how do we do it? We do it by being intentional, right back to what I 
started with today. Again, if you want this workbook, uh, go ahead and grab that now. Just shoot me a text. You guys already know my, my cell phone number, but please text me. Don't call. The number is 604-837-8361. And just send the keywords best year ever, and I'll know to send that off to you right away. Let me, if you want to stick around for a second here, you know, we're still going to have questions and answers with Dom. So there's more to come in the episode, but inside the E-Myth Revisited, Gerber talks about three tensions, three ways of seeing the world that we go through as business owners. And the most valuable one is that future focused one. Remember when I talked about you jump out of bed, your feet touch the floor, and you're already thinking about the future and you're asking yourself question, like how can I, and what if that's the entrepreneur mindset, that's the future focused mindset. But there's another mindset that we have that's causing tension in our brain. We got one side of us looking towards the future. We got one looking towards the past. And that past is saying things like, did we miss that change order? How much did that adhesive cost? Why is the post hole digger missing? All of those questions, whatever your technical trade is, right? You're measuring things that happened in the past. And so you've got a you know one, two tension. One thing's pulling to the left, one thing's pulling to the right. And you can imagine the kind of stress that puts on a person except that there's one more tension. There's actually a third variable that goes into the mix. And that third variable is the technician. That's the person on the wrenches, on the hammer, on the shovel, the guy doing the work or gal doing the work. Now you have to do a little bit of work, of course. You can't, you know, there's really no set it and forget it in business, regardless of what people say. You have to stay there to pay attention. But that technician is the lowest value work you can do when you're growing the business. If you're a garage door door installer or you're making custom arbors, whatever it is, that is your technical trade and your technical skill, but you're listening to this show and doing these kinds of exercises because you want to be a future-focused entrepreneur and you want to drive the most value you can into your business. Let's wrap up from here. We've got another important segment in the show and it's called Questions and Answers with Dom. Hey, by the way, if you want, you can submit a question to Q&A with Dom. Just go to speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom, right? So it's a simple website. You just go to the website on your computer, www.speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom. You can leave a question there and I'll answer it. But right now, grab this workbook, print it off, go to the coffee shop, put your headphones in, face the wall. The world's not going to fall apart if you leave for half an hour. The world isn't going to fall apart if you leave for half an hour. So go do that, right? Let me know how it goes. And listen, if you want me to buy you the coffee, take a picture of yourself working on this at the coffee shop, coffee in hand, and send that to me. And when you send me that picture, I then send you a $5 Amazon gift card. Because I don't know if you like Starbucks or or uh, any other, you know, co- you go to whatever coffee shop you want, but I'll send you five bucks. Like, I am so committed to you having 2023 be your best year ever. I'm going to pay for the coffee for you to do the workbook. How's that? So you come out ahead. You look, you can go home to your to your spouse, you know, your wife, your husband tonight and say, honey, I started 2023 by making five bucks. And they're going to say, oh, I was kind of hoping for more. And then you'll go, ah, oh, it's Dom. He's always joking. All right. Thanks for checking in, folks. I appreciate it. Get the download. Shoot me a text message. In the text, just say best year ever. Uh, The number, I'll repeat it again, 604-837-8361. Just say best year ever, and then we'll shoot you the workbook right away. Thanks for checking in. We'll talk to you soon. And stay tuned. Next is Questions and Answers with Dom. Well, well, well. Thanks for checking in, folks. I appreciate it. I really do. I hope you got a lot of value from that. If you want to make 2023 your best year ever, take a step. The step, I mean, it's a pretty simple step. Just send me a text message and get the download so you can start working on it. And even if it sits on the side of your desk, you're not able to get to it for a week or two, at least you've got the thing. But don't let the momentum slide. Get it from me now while you can still remember it. Just send me the the, the keyword best year ever, and I'll know to send that off to you. All right. Thanks for checking in, folks. Remember to stay tuned. We've got questions and answers with Dom, and we'll see you on the other side of that. Hey, everybody. Today's question and answer with Dom is a question that we posted on the contractor strategy group. Now, I'm doing the questions because, uh, hey, you guys aren't doing your part. You're not calling in to ask me questions. What you do 
if you want me to answer a question for you live here on the podcast, just go to speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom. And there's a little box that pops up. It says, do you want to record? Just hit record and away you go. So far, I'm 30 seconds into this recording. So you've got 90 seconds to do the recording. It's not hard. Um, But love to have you do that. So what we're doing today is we're going to take a question off of the Facebook group. Um, One of the things that we asked for some new members is what's the best time management tip you ever learned? So we're going to answer that today. This question, by the way, was posed to some new members on Contractor Strategy Group. Randy O'Reilly, Carlisa Montoya, The Closet Center, Eden Property Solutions. So thank you very much for all of you there who answered back. And uh, let's get to the answer. Hi, everyone. We're here to answer the question that was posed in the uh, Contractor Strategy Group, which is a free Facebook group if you're not part of it yet. Uh, it's about time management tips. What's the best time management tip you ever learned? There's actually a couple of people that that leaned in to answer, and I really appreciate the fact that that you guys uh, did that. So we've got answers from uh, Mark Bedrick, we've got Randy O'Reilly, and the Closet Center, who all answered. And here's what they said: Mark Bedrick's suggestion, the best time management tip he ever learned: use a day planner or some way to prioritize tasks. I got to give that a fist bump. That is for sure one of the keys to staying on top of your time management. Randy O'Reilly also says, use a calendar and keep a realistic to-do list. I like the fact that Randy said realistic. He's right. And ask yourself, are you using your calendar? And do you have a realistic to-do list? The beauty of having it written down is that you get to cross it off when you're done. And I don't know psychologically why that makes so much sense, but wow, does it ever feel good to cross things off the list, doesn't it? Randy, don't know if you agree with that, but I like I love your, your comment. <clears throat> Uh, The Closet Center said this, take the time to plan the day and the week. Work off of lists. Use time blocking technique. If it's not on the calendar, it ain't happening. Boom, boom, boom. The Closet Center. I'm going to give you three thumbs up on that. I absolutely agree. Let me read that again. What's the best time management tip? The Closet Center says, take the time to plan your day and your week. Work off of lists. Use time blocking. If it's not in the calendar, it ain't happening. So for those of you who find yourselves frustrated, who find yourself always in a reactive mode, like you're always putting out fires, like your hair is always on fire, the Closet Center has excellent suggestions here. Stop. Slow down. Before you get to the office in the morning, write a list. What do you need to accomplish today? What do you need to accomplish this week? Use something called time blocking. It's also called a default diary. You can look it up online. And many of you here uh, were in the training class that I ran last year on uh, time management tips and techniques. And those of you, even if you only came to the information call, you'll remember that time management is really about priority management. What's your highest priorities? Uh, Hey, let me throw this out there. If you want the um, uh, time management tips as a document download, I don't know, let me know. Shoot me a text message, 604-837-8361 and just say time management. And then you know what it'll do? I'll send it to you. You'll have to send me your email address and all that stuff. But you know what I mean? We'll send it off to you. <clears throat> Anyways, I want to say thank you to Mark Bedrick, Randy O'Reilly, and the Closet Center for answering this on the Contractor Strategy Group. So two things. Number one, if you're not on the Contractor Strategy Group on Facebook, you really should be. It's not just me yabbering away. We put questions there for sure, but we also post wins. We post questions from other people. Other people post questions. And the group is only for business owners in the construction and contracting trades. And so you're getting answers from other people who are in your shoes. So it's definitely a valuable place to be. It's it's not like most Facebook groups that they're just trying to sell you stuff. We're just here talking about the business of the construction and contracting business. So that's number one. If you're not on the contractor strategy group, if you say, I don't even want to be on Facebook and I hate groups, that's the only group you should join. Number two, if you want me to answer your question, if there's something frustrating you, if there's something you're curious about, if there's something you're stuck on, go ahead and leave me a question. This is now a new part of the uh, of a podcast episode. At the very end, I'm always going to do question and answers with Dom. All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash ask Dom, leave your question there and I'll answer it here. Thanks folks.